Character is nearly complete. Now we just need to add the body, clothing, and a rig. Today we'll be adding the body. I've made several changes and or improvements to my body process, so let's go over those first. Let's see what those differences look like. So here I have three female body meshes. This one's pretty old. This one's from a couple of months ago, and this one is my latest one. For a better comparison, here's what it looks like after subdivision is applied. The first thing you may have noticed is the switch from T-pose to A-pose. Now, there's nothing that's like completely too wrong with T-pose. I mean, it is easier as like all the limbs and stuff are aligned with the axes, so that may make it easier to model. But the advantages with the A-pose are, one, unlike the T-pose, I can get a better idea of what the character's arms and shoulders will look like in its neutral or game-ready position. In T-pose, I can't even tell if the arms are the right length until the character's rigged. And I have run into a lot of issues with the shoulders and any clothing around the shoulders. In A-Pose, it looks visually better, more relaxed, but it's also much better functionally because it's in the middle ground of any arm movements the character may have to do. If this is a starting position, this will have to go all the way down here, and that's going to stretch all of these vertices over here by a lot, and we don't want that. Meanwhile, with this one, it's a lot closer to the neutral position, so there's going to be a lot less pinching and deformation, and whichever way it goes, it's going to be fine because it's in, as we said, the middle ground where the faces at the joints won't have to move that much. And as you can see, we apply that as well to the arm and the hand. The first one, we didn't do that. So it's completely still and straight. Again, easier for modeling, but it's not close to the neutral position as it should be. We started fixing that in the second iteration where we made the hand much more in a relaxed position already, but the arms were still stiff and straight. Here we applied a little bend that goes with our middle ground principle and we applied that to the feet as well. We fleshed it out a little. Since this character will be wearing high heel footwear, most likely, we might as well account for that now by making the neutral position of the feet a little raised at the heels. And now for the booba. We went from this radial um, circular topology and we've just switched it to regular topology here. Um, this uses less vertices and it doesn't have that awkward area in the middle where, let me show you, like here, this is either if you remove the, if you dissolve this vertice in the middle, it's going to be an ugly end gone. But if it's not, then it's a whole bunch of triangular shaped quads. Another big point of improvement was the pelvis area. I used to have a lot of trouble in this area because as you can see, it's very flat and none of the parts are well defined. But now there is clear separation between the legs, the hips, and the pelvic area. And I'll demonstrate how I accomplish this later, but it just goes back to the concept of making the curves follow the structure of the body. I didn't accomplish this very well in this first model. In the second model, I did attempt it a little bit more. As you can see, it's a little more curved in this area, but I really wanted there to be clear definition, a clear separation. Not only does that look more realistic, Functionally, it's going to work better when it's rigged as well. Another big improvement was that the limb segments are much more fleshed out. They have much more definition in terms of uh, their shape. For example, the arms, as you can see in the older models, it just looks like a long tube. Yes, we fix this mainly by creating more flesh in the forearms. The snapping method tends to make it look shapeless and a lot of information is lost because of the subdivision surface modifier but I'll show you the extra step that you need to take so that you can avoid that and instead have it uh, with the correct amount of definition and detail. Notice the legs as well. We've created this more natural bowed leg look. It made the leg look a lot more natural and a lot more feminine as well. Here it's kind of mostly straight. We did try, but uh, definitely doesn't look good as this. Very small changes can make big improvements. The lines are also much sharper in terms of holds like the back of the knees, the forearms, the pelvic area, the clavicle. And we accomplish this with the correct use of crease. Let me show you in the unapplied one. Crease does what it says. It just creases out the edges that have it so that it's sharp. And uh, because we're using subdivision surface modifier, it will apply to everything except the areas that you've creased them in. So the creased areas will have that definition, which is what we want. So you'll see all the areas that have creased here. Over time, we've also improved the concept of localized density. So meaning we merge down in the correct areas. The hand is a place where there's a lot of detail at the fingers, the fingertips. 
but as you go to the forearm, there's not a lot of detail, not a lot of faces. And so to transition into that, as it goes from the high detail area to the low detail area, there are these triangles, which allow you to go from two points to one. These are placed on areas that don't really move or bend. So it doesn't matter as much that the topology is a little weird in those areas. That's okay. And keep in mind that this is before a subdivision surface is applied. So while they are triangles, they do become quads once the subdivision surface is applied. Without this concept, the whole model will have to take on the same density as the most high detailed areas, and we don't want that because that's too many vertices for no reason. Anyways, let me show you some more tips along the way as I demonstrate how I modeled this mesh step by step. First, just to be clear, there are some things I won't go over in this video because I already have full videos on them and they're all still pretty much the same. The body sculpture, the hands, and the feet. Links will be in the description. So I'll be taking the body sculpture from my last iteration. For those of you that don't know how we got to this point, well, to summarize a body video, we model a block out with simple shapes, subdivide it, use the remesh tool in sculpt mode to convert it to a sculptable object, and then we sculpt and adjust from there. The only thing that changes from that video is that we made the arms diagonal instead of straight in the block out phase so that we can have the A pose instead. First thing I did was tweak the arm angle using the pose brush. This is, I think, a newer feature. You can use it to bend your sculpture at joints as if you were in pose mode. So we bent the elbows to get that relaxed look and also bent the back a little backwards because our model had a slight anterior pelvic tilt. Using draw sharp or reverse draw, I carve out the lines where the crease details are gonna go, such as behind the knees, the pelvis area, and the rib cage. It doesn't have to be perfect, nor does everything have to be completely smooth, because once we do the retopology, that's what's gonna matter more. I'm gonna add some definition to the back muscles as well as the shoulder blades. Once satisfied with the details, I added a plain object to the scene, mirrored it, and turned on snapping by clicking the magnet icon near the top middle. And in the button on the right of it, I selected face nearest. I also ticked the in front option so that it would always show in front of the sculpture mesh. Then I did retopology part by part, starting on the chest area, making sure the outline of the breasts were first, and then I just filled them in. Don't forget to add your subdivision surface modifier, then shade smooth as well. And from now, 90% of it is loop cutting with control R, extruding with E, and filling in faces with F. Now, let's slow this down. As you can see, even though snapping is on, the mesh that we've just modeled is not aligned to our sculpture. So we have to turn off snapping, and this way we can adjust the vertices until it meets the sculpture lines. This is a step we're gonna take on multiple parts of this body mesh, just so that all the tiny details that we took the time to do in our sculpture are retained, and they're not lost due to the subdivision surface modifier. Do this from multiple angles, so from the front, from the side, and also from a three quarters angle until it properly lines up with the sculpture. Once this area is done, turn back on snapping and move on to the next area. I'm choosing to do a lot of the creased details first, so moving on to this lower body area, I start with this diagonal edge. I'm not trying to make underwear here, I'm trying to make the line that defines the separation between the leg and the lower body. Let's wrap it around while we're down here. And I'm gonna create another edge that transitions from this extremely angled line to a relatively more straight line because the edges on the leg are gonna be straight and parallel with the X axis. Start fleshing out the lower belly area. I move in that second supporting edge I made closer to the original edge. This is a higher density area. So we move them closer together and that's fine because we want to support that area when it comes to the deforms because the leg is gonna be bending at that point. When I flesh out the butt area, I'm also gonna make sure the curves follow the curve of the butt. Everything that's gonna have a crease, I make sure the curves are directly on that line where the crease is gonna be. So always remember the topology and the creases will always go hand in hand. I've already creased the boundary between the leg and the pelvis, and we're moving on to the rib cage area. Create a sharp crease under the breast, and the rib cage, same thing I told you a few seconds ago, make the topology follow the shape of the rib cage that you've just sculpted, and put a crease on that line to define it. Now I'm thinking, how are this top and bottom part gonna flow together well? And I'm gonna have to go back and redo some of these areas. Create an extra edge there so that it lines up nicely, 
with the ones on top. We found a suitable solution, so let's just fill those in. I'm gonna step back a little on this belly button area as well. It's awkward because there's more vertices on the top half. I thought about loop cutting an extra edge on the bottom so that it matches the top, but I thought it's really not needed to have vertices down there. So we'll just do this solution. Kind of like beveling around the belly button without using bevel, if that makes any sense. It's a rare case where you, we have to bevel around where it mirrors, so instead we're just going to use a knife tool. And again, I crease around the belly button and push that middle vertice in, and that creates that belly button. Push the rib cage up a little. It's sitting a little too low near the middle, as we could see by our sculpture, by toggling off the retopology mesh. Let's work on the hip area. Start fleshing out the back and I'm creating an edge line to follow the lat muscles. And I'm just filling in around the sides here. The belly is more dense than the back area and so a little merging down was needed here. So as mentioned, we merged down into a triangle on one of those areas. At some points during the process, sometimes I feel I'm just gonna apply the modifiers for a second and check to see that it looks fine when it's applied. Check the spacing and the overall flow of the mesh, and then switch back and continue working on it if it's all good. The mechanics of retopology are not difficult. What's difficult is the puzzle of creating a good flowing mesh. Don't be afraid to delete and solve it in a different way if the end product will be better because of it. Lower back's done, and I turn my attention to the legs. Here I can just extrude downwards from the pelvis. I'm actually going to step backwards here at this point and create an area where I merge down from the butt area into the leg area which doesn't need that much detail. Then I span out those vertices I just extruded and loop cut them. Again I turn off snapping and adjust the vertices so that they match those tiny details and curves that we have in our sculpture. Modeling the clavicle, another area that needs creases. I think I forgot to unpause the recording there so it skipped over a little, but as you can see it has two lines of creases and they're very close to each other but that's okay because we need that detail in that area, specifically at those points. Otherwise we can't get the detail that we want in that area. The neck is nothing special and I cap off the shoulder here as well, also not too complicated. This graphical error occurs when the normals are flipped the wrong way, so select all and use recalculate outside to get everything facing the same way. Let's finish up the upper back here. The upper back and neck area is a relatively easy part. We add a crease to where the shoulder blade is, as well as the middle of the back. Create an edge right around the armpit, and we crease that underarm as well. Created a nice complete loop between the shoulder and the armpit so that we can just extrude downwards from this point to create the arm. Same with the thigh, you just extrude and span them out so that it's even and then loop cut in between. The elbow is where we'll pay a little more attention to because again, we want to create that definition in the forearm this time, snapping off so that we can push these shoulder vertices into place. Plan out the edges that we're gonna use for the forearm as well as the crease that we're gonna be used. I think the crease faced the wrong way here, but later I flip it around, I think. Supporting loop cuts for the elbow because that is uh, where it will bend. And also a bevel for the pointy part of the elbow. Just completing the forearm. This is an extremely odd angle to work at. It's kind of too small to just extrude all the vertices, so we just worked on it slowly. See, the forearm shape is weird, so just go in and adjust that. Deleted that whole area that looked weird. Repositioned the crease. Turn off snapping and just adjust it in edit mode. 
Took quite a while to get this one looking the way I wanted, but just be patient. Take your time, don't rush it by settling for something that you know doesn't look right. Now for the knees and the bottom of the legs. Turn off snapping, make sure those details are in the right place, especially the knee. Then we can extrude the calf area, make sure it's lined up, fan out the vertices at the end. Then of course, turn off snapping again and put the calf vertices in the right spots. Make some nice meaty looking calves and thighs. Body's complete, I can make more tweaks later. Just gonna append the hand mesh now. It's not gonna come in with any modifiers, so add the subdivision surface back. Again, link in the description if you want the tutorial on how to make this hand. Let's rotate it the correct way, and then scale it down. Add the mirror modifier. Both your body mesh and this hand mesh will have two modifiers, subdivision and mirror. So when you join them, they're just gonna both use the same modifiers. Just gonna make sure the hand lines up correctly and is the correct size. This was still a bit large. I shrank it down later and made the forearm a little shorter. I used to be a little more meticulous and counted exactly the wrist and the forearm vertices so that I could join them up easily. But now as long as they're similar enough, like two or three vertices off, that's okay. I merge the vertices that are close enough and the areas that don't match I just merge down into a triangle or use the knife tool to create an extra edge wherever I need to. So here just figuring out how to reconcile merging these last few points. I'm gonna move around a few points, merge it there, there you go. It's all joined up, just got to make sure everything's smooth. Let's do the same thing with the foot. Append, re-add the modifiers, again, foot tutorial in the description. For free? Yes. Raise the heel slightly, add the mirror modifier as well. Toggle my old mesh as a reference real quick. Joined them together, but it was weird. In that case, just switch the order in which you select them. So again, with the merging, I'm gonna merge it down into a triangle here from the calf so that it lines up with the foot. Like the two points to join, press M and then press A to merge at center. And a couple more triangles here, one there, one there. And trust me, it's okay. That part of the foot will not bend. Now we just gotta adjust it a little because it looks a little off from some angles. We can easily shorten it at this point, like so. You can even go into sculpt mode at this point. Start sculpting it out. Make the feet look a little less flat. And that should be it for now. We'll do the shading and the texturing in the next one, along with when we're creating the outfit. Here's our total progress for now. We did shorten the forearm a little bit and made the hand a little smaller. And the next video coming up, we'll design an outfit and then model it. Texture the outfit, texture the body if needed. We might just go with a simple shader though. We'll see. Then we'll rig it and hopefully we can create a little animation. The end goal for this particular character is to create a short animation. So we'll see how that goes. If you want to see the progress of this or if the video helped out, feel free to like, maybe subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. So have yourself a good one and bye bye now.